Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the 13th annual Roll Call of Nations ceremony and presentation of the Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom. Traditionally, we gather on the grounds of our memorial, uh, just blocks from the U.S. Capitol, where we honor our Medal Laureate and lay wreaths and share moments of silence. We're not able to meet like that today, and so we have uh, organized a virtual program for all of you. Today, it is our privilege to honor Jose Daniel Ferreira with our Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom and to join in solidarity with him and all of our brothers and sisters in Cuba who long for freedom. So far this month, your Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation has experienced cyber attacks as we hosted the Tiananmen Square massacre vigil last week. Our memorial has been vandalized by rioters in Washington, D.C., and VOC staff have been subjected to targeted harassment and threats of violence. I want to assure you that we will not be silenced. We will not be intimidated, and we will not be distracted. We will not stop working to advance our mission of educating Americans about the ideology, the history, and the legacy of communism. And we will continue to speak up for and stand with those hundreds of millions of people around the world who continue to suffer under the oppression of single-party communist dictatorships, more than 20% of the world's population alive today. I want to thank our Foundation's Board of Trustees and our hardworking staff for their courage and dedication to this mission. I want to thank our thousands of financial supporters and volunteers. Without you, we could not do this important work. Together, we are working to see a world that is free from the tyranny of communist parties in power. I thank the dozens of embassies and diplomats who gather with us every year in the memory of those men and women and children who have been killed in some 40 nations by communist regimes since 1917. And we are honored to be joined by a number of ambassadors today. I thank the members of our bipartisan Congressional Caucus for the Victims of Communism uh, and other members of Congress who provide leadership on this issue for helping us to establish truth, justice, and memory for the victims of communism especially Senator Marco Rubio and Congressman Dan Lipinski, who you'll hear from in a few minutes. As we work to perfect our union here in the United States and work to educate young Americans, we seek liberty and justice for all. We must learn the lessons of the past if we are to build a brighter future. We continue to denounce the violent and extremist ideologies that have brought so much suffering and destruction to our world, especially the twin totalitarian ideologies of Nazism and communism. Fascism and socialism have no place in American political life. Right now seems a good moment to recall the dedication ceremony of our Victims of Communism Memorial Statue, the Goddess of Democracy, in June 2007. Among the speakers that day were President George W. Bush and Congressman Tom Lantosh, the only Holocaust survivor to ever serve in the U.S. Congress. Here are their words. The 20th century will be remembered as the deadliest century in human history. And the record of this brutal era is commemorated in memorials across this city. Yet until now, our nation's capital had no monument to the victims of imperial communism, an ideology that took the lives of an estimated 100 million innocent men, women, and children. 
So it's fitting that we gather to remember those who perished at communism's hands and dedicate this memorial that will enshrine their suffering and sacrifice in the conscience of the world. The men and women who designed this memorial could have chosen an image of repression for this space, a replica of the wall that once divided Berlin, or the frozen barracks of the Gulag, or a killing field littered with skulls. Instead, they chose an image of hope, a woman holding a lamp of liberty. She reminds us of the victims of communism and also of the power that overcame communism. We are an ahistorical society, and it's absolutely mandatory that we remember the period of communism which represented an existential threat to the civilized world. I salute and honor all those who played a role in bringing about this monument, so significant to the upcoming generation, which barely knows that not too many years ago, the communists felt that they were the wave of the future, that the future belonged to them. And it took a handful of powerful political leaders in this country and elsewhere, Republicans and Democrats, and individuals of all political persuasions to recognize the difference between free and open and democratic societies and communist tyranny. The United States of America, of which not only I am proud to be a citizen, but every single individual who tasted communism from Albania to Estonia knows that without the United States of America, this existential struggle for human freedom and human liberty would have been lost. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful day in Washington, D.C., and a great day to be alive, particularly for this, to come together for this particular occasion to memorialize, to remember the 100 million victims of communism. You know, some 13 years ago, we dedicated our memorial, and I'm proud to say that President George W. Bush, our honorary chairman, was here to accept it for the American people. And on that occasion, he said that we have a solemn obligation to remember the victims of communism. And that's what we're about here today, this morning. You know, the, it's so exciting to us that in this last decade and a half, national leaders from all over the world have come here to lay a wreath, uh, to say a silent prayer for the fallen. Uh, national ethnic organizations from the United States and from overseas also have come here to have rallies, to have ceremonies, to have candlelight vigils. We're so proud that what we hoped that we would be able to do with this memorial has come to pass. Some people ask, well, why, why did you pick the goddess of democracy as the icon at the center of your Freedom Plaza? Well, we debated this long and hard. We thought perhaps a piece of the Berlin Wall, uh, perhaps some representation of the killing fields of Cambodia, or maybe even a tiny boat used by those who were fleeing from the tyranny of Vietnam or Cuba. But we picked the goddess of democracy, which dominated Tiananmen Square in the spring of 1989, because it represented two things, it represented the willingness of communist tyrants to do whatever they had to do to hold on to power. But more importantly, it represents that passionate desire for freedom, for democracy that beats within the breast of every human being. And so here we come every June, and we know that year by year we come closer and closer to that day when communism will be dumped on the ash heap of history. We know that we're coming year by year much closer to that day when 
all the captive peoples and nations will be free and will be independent. Why are we here? Well, we are here, I think, because we hear the voices of the victims saying to us, remember us, remember us. And we respond by, and vowing by saying, never again, never, never, never will we forget you. And so may God bless the victims of communism and all victims of tyranny over the mind of man. Hello, this is Senator Marco Rubio, and I'm pleased to virtually join you all as we honor a true Cuban patriot and a man who has tirelessly fought in the defense of democracy and against tyranny in his beloved homeland, Jose Daniel Ferrer. As one of Cuba's most prominent and well-respected Cuban pro-democracy and human rights activists, Jose Daniel Ferrer has endured firsthand the hardship and the brutality of a communist dictatorship Ferrer's family members, including his infant child, as well as members of the Patriotic Union of Cuba, known as UNPACU, have been targeted, they've been tortured, and arbitrarily detained under inhuman conditions by the Castro and Diaz Canal dictatorship. Jose Daniel Ferrer, a prisoner of conscience, has been a victim of the Cuban regime's campaign of harassment, intimidation, and surveillance. His only crime? speaking for the voiceless and opposing a dictatorial communist regime that undermines democratic order and the rule of law. Ferrer joins a select group of Cuban laureates, including Coco Farinas, the late Oswaldo Payá, and Congresswoman Ileana ross Leitman, individuals who've left an everlasting legacy for the defense of human rights, democracy, and freedom of speech in Cuba. A nombre de victim to a Communist Memorial Foundation, Tengo el honor de presentar este tributo a José Daniel Ferrer. José Daniel, este tributo es por tu trabajo por los derechos humanos, la libertad y la democracia en Cuba. Sabemos que no puedes recibir directamente porque estás bajo arresto domiciliario después de varios meses en prisión. Veremos cómo haremos para hacerte llegar este merecido tributo por tu trabajo y por tu lucha por la libertad en Cuba. Saludos cordiales para Lee Edwards, Aldona Voz, Marion Smith, y para todos los directivos y miembros de esa prestigiosa fundación que lleva por nombre Víctimas del Comunismo. Nací y crecí bajo un régimen de corte estalinista. Durante casi 50 años que pronto cumplo, he vivido y he sido víctima del de régimen comunista instaurado con el apoyo soviético por Fidel Castro en la mayor de las Antillas. Desde temprana edad, gracias a transmisiones de emisoras occidentales, transmisiones de onda corta, y gracias a literatura censurada, literatura prohibida por los comunistas, en mi país pude comprender la verdadera esencia de este sistema, de esta ideología. Pude conocer su historia, pude saber que eran responsables de las muertes de millones de personas en el planeta y de la destrucción y de la miseria de pueblos enteros. Desde temprana edad conocí de la obra de luchadores en la Europa Oriental como Vaclav Havel, Les Valesa, Andrei Saharov y otros, y supe también de la labor a favor de la libertad, a favor de la democracia, en contra del comunismo, de personas como el Papa Juan Pablo II, Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher y otros. Cuando recientemente supe que la Fundación Víctimas del Comunismo había decidido otorgarme por mi humilde, por mi modesta labor a favor de los derechos humanos y contra el comunismo, su prestigiosa medalla de la libertad Truman Reagan, sentí muchísima alegría, sentí gran satisfacción, porque esa distinción tan prestigiosa ha sido recibida en otras ocasiones por personas a quienes admiro y a quienes respeto y de quienes 
he aprendido mucho durante mis años de lucha a favor de los derechos humanos y contra la opresión comunista. Incluso tres compatriotas míos, tres cubanos dignos, valientes, valientes luchadores, han recibido tan prestigioso galardón. El comunismo no solamente causó muchas muertes, sufrimiento y dolor, continúa causándolo aún. Aún hay en el planeta más de 1.400 millones de personas que viven bajo regímenes comunistas. China, Vietnam, Corea del Norte, Laos, Cuba y por desgracia este modelo, esta ideología viene también pisoteando, viene también causando dolor y sufrimiento a los hermanos pueblos de Venezuela y de Nicaragua. Y han hecho también muchos intentos y no se rinden, continúan haciéndolos para llevar tan nefasto sistema a otro pueblo, para oprimir, explotar, y esclavizar a otras naciones, no solamente en nuestro continente, sino también en otras geografías. Vivimos momentos muy difíciles. Estamos enfrentando la pandemia de la COVID-19 y vemos cómo pueblos, gobiernos, instituciones, alarmados por el peligro del nuevo coronavirus, toman rápidas medidas para evitar contagio para evitar muertes, para evitar daños. Sin embargo, hemos visto cómo durante décadas pueblos políticos, instituciones se han descuidado, han bajado la guardia y han permitido que ese virus, que es el comunismo, aún más peligroso que todos los coronavirus, entre en diferentes pueblos y causen muchísima muerte, muchísima destrucción y muchísima miseria. Debemos estar más alertas que nunca y debemos seguir dándole la batalla al comunismo, no solamente en las naciones donde aún existe, sino también en naciones democráticas que el comunismo trata de penetrar y que pretende convertir en sistemas, en modelos verdaderamente alarmantes, verdaderamente peligrosos, porque pisotean, porque cercenan, porque coartan los derechos y libertades fundamentales del ser humano. La lucha contra el comunismo debe ser siempre y en todo el planeta. No debemos descuidarnos, debemos educar a nuestros hijos, a los jóvenes, a las futuras generaciones para que no sucumban ante el engaño, ante esa gran estafa, como diría Eudocio Rabine, que es el modelo comunista. Muchísimas gracias por esta prestigiosa distinción. No la merezco, pero sí les aseguro que continuaré luchando hasta el último día de mi vida contra el comunismo y a favor de los derechos humanos, la democracia y la libertad. As founding co-chair of the Victims of Communism Congressional Caucus, I'm glad to be with you today. I want to begin by congratulating Jose Daniel Ferrer on being awarded the Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom for his work defending human rights in Cuba. Though pandemic keeps us apart, it cannot keep our voices down, speaking up for the victims of communism, past and present. Few too many people know that communism historically has always led to human rights abuses, oftentimes the worst kind. Over 100 million people have been killed through communist regimes. We must speak up, especially when it comes to China. I want to thank everyone at the Memorial Foundation for helping us come together to speak up for freedom for the people of Hong Kong. We must stand up everywhere we can against oppression, 
and for freedom and human rights around the world. Let us not let up in our fight against communist oppression and reminding the world of this threat to human rights. Thank you all for joining us today. Every year, on June 12, representatives of the nations from Central and Eastern Europe pay respect to the victims of communism at the memorial in Washington. This memorial is dedicated to all the victims of communism and to those who love liberty. Its pedestal reads, to the freedom and independence of all captive nations and peoples. My country had been on the wrong side of history for 45 years. Now, Bulgaria is a democratic country with market economy, rule of law, and human rights, a member of NATO and European Union. But we must remember history. Those who don't remember history are condemned to repeat it. I thank you. Hello, my name is Graham McIntyre and I'm with the Canadian Embassy here in Washington, DC. I'd like to thank you for having me here. Canada is honored to, to be part of this virtual wreath laying in remembrance of the victims of communism. We are grateful for the Foundation's work to continually commemorate the victims of totalitarian regimes. You are keeping the, their stories alive and ever present in the hearts and minds of all. It is with this in mind that Canada is committed to upholding and promoting our principles and values on the international stage, and in particular through bodies such as the United Nations to help build a better world. Thank you again. The times of great suffering and pain, such as these unleashed to the world now by the pandemic, resonate deeply within a wider perspective of tragedies across the ages and lands, wreaked upon the humanity by the nature and by the man. Hence, this is also a special moment, a most unfortunate one indeed, to remember and honor the victims of communism, a brutal and repressive totalitarian regime, corrupt and corrupting, which has left its own legacy. Hiding behind the great slogans and notions of liberty, progress and equality, it was most profoundly perverting them, bringing deprivation, misery and fear. Those standing against it, the dissidents standing for their captive nations, together with so many victims, having paid for the heroic opposition with their lives by their years of imprisonment, have been standing tall, like lighthouses piercing the darkness shining bright, emanating defiance, dignity and hope. Today, we commemorate the more than 100 million victims of communism. As you know, Estonia was deeply impacted by the crimes of communism in the 20th century. We lost our freedom and independence, and every family in Estonia today has a tragic story to tell about somebody either being murdered, being deported, or suffering otherwise under the communist regime of the Soviet Union. We remember not only because we care about the past, we remember because we care about the future. As Ronald Reagan once wisely said, freedom is never more than one generation away from going extinct. It is our turn now. We may have defeated Soviet communism almost 30 years ago, but the world is not a safe place for freedom. It is not a safe place unless we make it so. For that, we need to remember the past. 
we need to focus on the future. And we, the free countries of the world, need to work together to preserve freedom for ourselves and to guarantee to those who like it today. Today I am pleased to honor the memory of more than 100 million victims of communism regimes around the world. Both the innocent victims of communism and those who sacrificed their lives fighting this plague as it swept across the European continent. Every day we discover new evidence of that unfathomable brutality practiced by all communist regimes in the West and East. Entire generations found themselves locked behind the Iron Curtain, unable to reach freedom. Georgia was among the first nations victims of communism. The Bolshevik-led invasion in 1921 ended the short-lived social democratic experiment in Georgia, paving the way to the horrors of terror, repression, reprisal, and purges on an unprecedented scale. Georgia's best sons and daughters were executed, imprisoned, and sent to Russian gulags and work camps for decades. This is Georgia's story, but it is also the haunting reality of many others in Europe. Freedom ultimately triumphed, and captive nations regained their independence some 70 years after the disease began. Many victims have found prosperity and security within the EU and NATO. Others, aspiring for the better future, including Georgia, are still locked in an uncompromising fight against Russia that employs military invasions, occupations, disinformation, and historical revisionism. As we pay tribute today to the immense sacrifice of the generations of heroes from the former communist states, we must remind ourselves that repeating such tragedies must be prevented at all costs. To the victims of Communist Memorial Foundation, I say, never let your wrath cool and never let us forget the crimes of these criminal regimes. The 30th anniversary this year of the system change and democratization in 1990, including the first free and fair election in Hungary, remind us how precious and valuable this hard fought freedom is and how much we should cherish it. Thank you. This year the world marks 75 years since the end of the Second World War. The Nazi regime was defeated and Western Europe was free again. But for Latvia one evil regime was replaced by another. My country was occupied by communist regime of the Soviet Union. The Republic of Latvia survived through the diplomatic missions in London and later in Washington DC and resistance in Latvia. Our diaspora around the world organized and continued to remind the free world that we are not truly free until all of us are free. The Soviets brutalized Latvian citizens by organizing mass deportations to Siberia, by attempting to russify and suppress our civil society. They tried to erase and change our history. Unfortunately, these sad attempts to rewrite past continue to this day. Latvia is now 102 years old democracy that recently marked 30 years since the democratic recovery of independence. As member of the European Union, NATO for 16 years, Latvia is a vibrant multi-party democracy that is advancing through green innovation, e-government and continued reforms. Latvia is supporting democratic governance in the European Union Eastern Partnership countries and speaking up against the illegal occupation of Crimea and Russian aggression against Ukraine. Latvia is a northern European example of how to recover from communist manipulation and it is a shining example of what freedom, the rule of law, multilateral cooperation and solidarity can achieve. Today we remember those who have suffered and sacrificed fighting foreign occupations and depraved ideologies and speak up once again for democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, today we take time to remember victims of communism. 
Lithuania has experienced 50 years of Soviet occupation, which meant the communist regime imposed on us. Hundreds of thousands of Lithuanians were killed, deported or imprisoned in Siberia, where most of them perished. Those people paid the ultimate price for the Lithuanians of today to live in free society, in democratic society. We should remember and pay respect to the victims of communism. It helps us to appreciate their sacrifice, but it also helps us to avoid the atrocities in the future. I would like to express my genuine appreciation for the work the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation does. It does exactly that. It helps us not to forget. It helps us to remember. It helps us to pay respect to the victims. And it helps us to appreciate the democratic society or societies we are living in today. Thank you. The Victims of Communism Memorial, dedicated on the 20th anniversary of President Ronald Reagan's 1987 Brandenburg Gate speech, serves as a reminder of how far we've come as communities of liberty. The Polish elections in 1989 broke the communist hold on power, which lasted since the end of World War II, and allowed the opposition to chart a new democratic course for Poland. This was followed by the fall of the Berlin Wall and culminated in the disintegration of the Soviet Union. The Polish Embassy has participated in the wreath-laying ceremony every year since the dedication of the memorial in 2007. Participation in this event is a priority for us and a personal honor for me. Today, we pay tribute to the memory of those who suffered and perished under communist rule and also recognize that as a people, we must continue to be vigilant. It is our duty to remind the world that not all nations enjoy the freedoms that we often take for granted. We offer hope and support to those who continue to be discriminated by cruel regimes for who they are and what they believe or do not believe in. To borrow President Reagan's words, I am certain that these regimes will have no choice but to tear down the walls of subjugation, intolerance and fear. Just recently we were celebrating the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe Day, a milestone in European history. But the relief this day had brought was short-lived, as so many of us were subjected to further years of misery under another brutal rule, the communist one. The sacrifice we had to make in fighting for our freedom must drive us to preserve for future generations the system created after the fall of these regimes. This means working together in unity and cooperation so that no country willing to live in freedom and democracy is left out again. That also means preserving facts of history free from deception and manipulation so we can continue to learn from them. Dear friends, today we commemorate all those who fell victim to the horrors of the communist ideology the heroes who fought for freedom of their nations, and all millions of those whose lives were taken and destroyed by this utopian madness, by the brutal machines of communism and Nazism. Ukrainians have always wanted to be free and define their own future. Yet this scourge of communist regime ravaged our homeland and turned it, as Professor Timothy Snyder called it, into the bloodlands trying to pummel Ukrainians into obedience. Millions have been killed, sent to gulag camps. Millions have been starved to death in the man-made hunger, the Holodomor genocide of 1932-1933. Those who managed to survive lived for many decades in oppression and cherished their dream to one day be free. Today, we honor all those who gave their lives for freedom and pay tribute to their sacrifice. Today, 
we call out the perpetrators of these crimes of communist terror so that this tragic page in history will never be repeated. Today, Taiwan joins like-minded countries and partners to commemorate the victims of communism around the world. Taiwan stands on the front line in resisting authoritarian China's increased pressure to erode our hard-won democracy and defending our inalienable rights. We remember those freedom defenders at Tiananmen Square in 1989 and Hong Kong in 2020 who have sacrificed in the fight against communist oppression. As revisionist powers seek to explode the COVID-19 crisis to sow division and undermine international order, we must remain clear-eyed and committed to jointly safeguarding our cherished liberties, fostering peace and prosperity so we can preserve for our children a future free from the evils of communism. For the victims of Albania. On behalf of the Belarusian American Association. On behalf of Bitter Winter. On behalf of Campaign for Uyghurs. For the victims of the Chinese Communist Party's atrocities in East Turkestan. For the victims of communism in Cuba, on behalf of the Center for a Free Cuba. On behalf of Citizen Power Initiatives for China. For the victims of the Kim regime of North Korea, on behalf of the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea, HRNK. For the victim of communism in Laos, on behalf of the Congress of Women People. On behalf of the Rada of the Belarusian Democratic Republic. For the victims of Cuba. On behalf of the Estonian American National Council. In memory of Falun Gong practitioners who have died in China. Friends of the Imperial City of Hue. On behalf of Humanitarian China. On behalf of the Hungarian American Coalition, today we remember the victims of communism in Hungary and indeed around the world. On behalf of the Hungary Initiatives Foundation for the Hungarian victims of communism. Honoring the Crimean Tatars, victims of communism in memory of the victims of the Kim family in North Korea, the millions who have died on behalf of the North Korea Freedom Coalition. For the victims of Cuba. We remember Macedonian victims of communism in Albania, Bulgaria, Greece, Macedonia, and Serbia. Memory eternal. For the victims of Soviet communism in Ukraine and other countries, on behalf of the U.S. Ukraine Foundation. For the victims of East Turkestan, on behalf of the Uyghur Human Rights Project. For the victims of the communists of Vietnam. For the victims of Vietnam. For the victims of Vietnam, on behalf of Vietnam Coalition Against Torture. To the victims of communism in Albania, on behalf of the Women Organization Hope and Peace, Mimosa Daichi, New York. For the 400 million victims of forced abortion in China from Women's Rights Without Frontiers. Well, that concludes our program for this year's Roll Call of Nations ceremony. You can find us online at victimsofcommunism.org, and I look forward to seeing many of you at our events later this year.